Hello, 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 and welcome to This Is R&B, The Reach. We're here to explore how R&B's influence on other forms of art. Today, we're going to capitalize on how R&B has influenced theater. So today, we have the lovely Latoya London. <laughs> Hi, Latoya, Hi. how are you? <laughs> I'm wonderful, thanks for having oh. me. <laughs> of course, of course. So unless you've been living under a rock, you've seen LaToya on the big screen, the small screen, the radio, and theaters near and far. For those who don't know, LaToya was one of the four finalists on American Idol with the likes of Jennifer Hudson and Fantasia. And then we have the lovely LaToya. <laughs> what was it like working with artists like that at the beginning of your career? Oh my gosh. Well, I mean, it definitely was like intimidating. I mean, because, you know, they're such amazing singers, like seriously. And so being, and then having to be on a competition where it's like, I'm competing with them. So, you know, it was very, uh, I was high anxiety, nerve wracking, you know, but yet these were my sisters too, you know what I mean? Cause we were cool, you know? So um, it was just, it was, it was a weird space to be in. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay, uh, so speaking of American Idol, what was it like warming the heart of Simon Cowell, who was notorious for being, uh, let's say, particular about the artists that he liked? You were one of his favorites. What did that feel like? Um, it felt really good, honestly. Um, you know, and it's, it's crazy too, because at that time, like, I was so like, still in my head of like, oh my God, I can't believe I'm here. Oh my God, I can't believe I'm here on assignment. Oh my God, you know? So like a lot of what was said kind of didn't really land really, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or, you know, so, but it, you know, those comments definitely like, it just reassured me. It made me feel good, of course. Um, and uh, yeah, because he's such, he's such a hard person to please. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Well, you were able to do that because you're extremely talented. Thank you. So, bumping off of American Idol, you were able to score a record deal with Concord Records, the sister label of Peak Records. Yes. Um, yes. You were able to work with the likes of Black Thoughts from the legendary The Roots. Now, yes. moving into that R&B, and what, what type of artist were you trying to be on your first album, coming off of something like that? Yeah, so... I was, uh, I came off very mature, you know mm -hmm. what I mean, on the show. And my label at the time, they definitely wanted to, like we wanted to, I wanted to be that class act like singer, but yet I didn't want to be so far to the mature side that, you know, mm -hmm. I wasn't uh, giving my my young self or my young audience like something, you know what I mean? Because yeah. I, was, I was 25, you know, so I really wanted to that to shine through. So. You know, I, I wanted to make sure that I had songs like Appreciate with Black Thought on there. I had another song on my album, None of What You Do, you know, it was more like hip hop edge, um, you know, uh, anything. Uh, it's songs on there that people don't even like, they have music <laughs> that are like the bomb. They're still classic to this day. Every part of um, me state of my heart <laughs> exactly and see those were more of like the more mature kind of well definitely state of my heart um mm -hmm. you know then how i love the rain was like more of a jazz classic so i yes. had a multitude of songs of genres on that album as a collective mm -hmm. um so it really showed the different sides of me the pop side the young r b side the hip you know the kind of street urban side you know so i married all of those things on the album so it, it actually worked out yeah it worked out beautifully Thank i love you. the way you were able to weave those things together and still be still be true to yourself because even mm -hmm. though you're young and working with the label oftentimes we to find that artists get lost but listening to that album i was able to be like oh wow here she is okay latoya i'm here with you uh, yes. you're not just one thing black girl magic is a plethora of things okay mm -hmm. and it was, mm. it was way back in the day you Easy. had it <laughs> Easy. Okay, we got we got some cayenne in here we got some right. garlic powder in here we got some you know like different seasonings absolutely we're not a one trick phone not at all <laughs> Not at all. Okay. <laughs> so with your new single, Forever, the the video is visually stunning. What message or story were you trying to tell with that video? 
because that yes, video has black girl magic all over it, if we're going to speak about it let's have that right. segue <laughs> so exactly so with that album like that was about me celebrating my heritage you know like you know we we, you know, we're taught history, but we're only taught, it only goes back so far, our history. You know what I'm saying? And so like, it starts at slavery, you know what I mean? And we're, we're we go further than that, you know yes. what I mean? So I, you know, I've, I've discovered that, I've read about that, I've, I've you know, I've done the uh, ancestry.com where I'm looking back and seeing who my folks are and where they're from and all that. And so I wanted to celebrate that. And I mm -hmm. want to encourage others to do the same, you know, like I was saying on another interview, like, you know, you have the 23andMe, the Ancestry.com and all that. And people want to know who they are. Um, we're not just black. You know what I mean? We're not right. just, you know, what, who, who, everyone has a nationality. So yes. what is that? So <laughs> I think that once you find that you, you can, you can, um, you can grasp to something. You can feel, you know, like feel more confident, like of, who you are and so that was me just celebrating mine and encouraging others and you know somebody may resonate with it and be like hey that's me too you know so yeah that was just freedom of freedom of art and freedom of speech yes it was def <laughs> it definitely sh shined through i was able to see okay i'm seeing all these different influence i see africa i see egypt in africa like there was just so much i was like this is beautiful and it's making me want to i watched it about three times just because there were so many visual things just the names of the books and things like that i was like I, let me see the name of this book like i kept going back because it was so yeah. much being thrown at you but in an artistic beautiful way that you didn't feel like overwhelmed by it so mm -hmm. i wanted to find out what your message was and I yes. think it was well portrayed. I think I Thank got you. that message. Thank you. Thank you. So what artists do you draw from? Um, ooh, honestly, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I grew up listening to the legends, you know, um, Whitney, Tim Houston, Mariah Carey, um, you know, in Vogue, Luther Vandross, you know, so, really that's what's inside that's where that's kind of who i who i am innately and um i really just draw from within i don't draw from other artists literally my art comes from you know within and of course you know we are who, who we kind of like grown up to like you know when we take on traits of our parents you know what i mean we take on traits of those who are around us and so that's the music that was around me and so that's what that's what developed me but then i became my own like you know what 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 is within me what do who, who am i you know what I'm right. saying? so that's where i draw from and i bring that out um and so yeah i don't even like compare myself to other artists. I don't draw my, I don't draw from other artists to like, okay, let me see what they're doing. And okay, I want to do that. I don't do none of that. I literally draw from within. Well, that's amazing. Yeah. Uh, speaking of the legendary late Miss Whitney Houston, yeah. you actually got to play a role that she made famous and iconic. Uh, yes. Rachel Marin or Morin? Marin. Marin. <laughs> uh, sorry, Rachel Marin in The Bodyguard that yes. was translated and put into a musical and mm -hmm. you got to play that role. What was that like? Girl, uh, it was an honor. It was an honor. Like she's my idol, you know what I mean? Just, um, they called me Little Whitney when I was little, like, watch, <laughs> I was singing, they'd be like, watch out Whitney, you know? Um, so, you know, just to be able to sing her songs, you know, the songs that I loved and that shaped me and my vo my vocal sound and all that, um, that was an honor. It was just, I, I have no words. It was just a straight honor and I was so happy to be able to, to experience that. I can imagine, I can imagine. Yeah. It's big shoes to fill and I think you did an amazing job with it. Thank you. <laughs> So keeping on the track of theater and its influence mm -hmm. by R&B and other entities, tell us about working with Snoop Dogg <laughs> on <laughs> Redemption of the Dog. 
Like, what was it like working with Snoop, an artist who has worked with R&B artists, but is known more for his uh, rap and hip hop? So mm -hmm. tell us about that. Yeah, Snoop, he's a cool dude. Like, seriously, he's just real chill. Um, he wasn't a a-hole, a, a you know, it's the people wonder, like, how are people in real life? Right. Like, like, seriously, he was just real chill. He he was nurturing. You know, he made sure that we were good. Um, you know, we were able to, like, he was personable. You know, okay. we were able to chill out with him. And, and then just to see his interaction as well with, um, you know, family or, or fans that would come backstage after the show, spend time with him. Like, he really gave each one time. And he made them feel like, they were special, you know what I mean? Like he didn't, he didn't have that like, um, just surface energy and just, uh, you know, like, okay, hi, how you doing? Okay, uh-huh, yeah, yeah. And then <laughs> on to the next, you know what I mean? He really engaged with people. Right. And um, so yeah, he's just real people. I, I really, I really got to see, you know, another, another side of him. You know what I That's mean? That's amazing. And, and then just, and then, then, his music is from my, my era, you know, when I was in junior high, and, you know, and so I grew up on it. And so to be able to listen to that live every night, it was like a straight Snoop concert right. every night. And I had to pinch myself like, yo, yo, oh my God, <laughs> I was in the wings every night. Yes. Like, ah! And then he would have guest performers come in, like Lil Duval, they came in and did uh, Best Life. Um, <laughs> Erica Badu came and did a live show. Queen. Raheem Devon. Wow. I mean, he, yeah, he lent the stage to other artists that came in and opened up. And like, he would, um, yeah, it, it was dope. It was so dope. It was a great experience. It was a concert and fun every, every night. <laughs> yes, like that is the best when your art gets to just get to have fun with it. Yes, this is yeah. my job, but I chose this life because I get to have the most fun, learn the most, meet the best people, and have like just learning every day. It's constantly exactly. learning. Exactly. Constantly learning. But yeah, that journey is a beautiful one. Absolutely. Of course. Well, my next question would be, how has R&B influenced you in the theater world? Was that a good, a easy transition? Was it something you saw yourself doing? Or was theater something you always wanted to do? Yeah, I didn't see myself doing theater. I wasn't, I wasn't exposed to theater like that. Like, you know, just maybe like church plays or, you know, um, you know, I don't even know if I was exposed to like Medea type of plays that came to town, like right. really. Oh, but I would see like cats on TV. I didn't know what it was, you know, when I was younger. But, and then when I was on Idol and they would talk about Broadway, like you would be perfect for Broadway or, you know, that that's your thing. And I was just like, no, like <laughs> I, I'm an R&B singer. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm an artist. I don't know this Broadway things. I, I didn't understand right. it. And so when I was introduced to it and I had the opportunity and I experienced it, it was like, oh, okay, I get it newfound respect, um, <laughs> the, like the pieces, the art behind it, the music behind it, the lights, the acting, the drum, like it, it's a thing. Yes, yes. It's its own beast. There's so many it's aspects its into beast. it. Yes. Like, and it, and it's, it's not, it's, it's not for everybody. Like not any R&B singer can just go into Broadway and become mm. like, it's it's totally different and two what you learn too the difference is like r b and as a as, as a um, as a solo artist it's about you you know what i'm saying you get on stage you do what you won't do you you know you may do what you did in rehearsal you may dv away from that you know it's whatever you're the star you know mm -hmm. but with with broadway baby you're not and you you know what i mean it's a team effort right you know what I mean? And um, it's not about you, it's about the piece. So you can't even come in and sing something and, and do a run the way you would do it on your own R&B stage. <laughs> right. Like, you know, if it's not the time period of the piece, like that happened a lot with The Color Purple because it, mm -hmm. it, it um, stemmed or it took place like in 19 something, you know what I mean? And so back then we weren't doing little, you know, hey, we weren't doing like runs like that. So right. You have to you know, a lot of people were getting notes like, um, you know, you know, keep it straight or, you know, keep it, keep it the, 
time period, you know? Right. And so that that was a learning experience. Like, wow, okay, I am not me. Mm -hmm. I am this character in this period of time. Yes. And this is what was going on then. And I have to embody that. Beautiful thing. Beautiful <laughs> thing. Like literally teaches you to get up, get outside of yourself and yeah. have empathy outside of yourself and, and, and consciousness outside of yourself. Right. Yeah. I love it. Musical theater is like my end all be all it's my favorite thing um so speaking of musical theater once again you were in the color purple yeah. so the color purple is near and dear to my heart um and other artists that you've worked with before like jennifer hudson got to do the show during the revival and yeah. did an amazing job um would you ever want to do something with Jennifer like if they were like we found this amazing with this amazing musical theater play we wrote just for you two would you be on board absolutely <laughs> absolutely um yes I would love to to perform with my sister whether Broadway stage R&B stage at home chilling like heck yeah <laughs> Well, would you want to perform with this sister today and sing a little bit from The Color Purple, a little Let's snippet, up. a little bit Let's of Huckleberry up. Pie? Let's do it. <laughs> okay, wait, let me, you know, I got to pull my lyrics up. It's been 10 years. Honey, that's <laughs> fine. Let's do it. I had to look it up myself, not going to lie. <laughs> okay, you ready? I'm ready. Hey, sister, what you going to do? Going down by the river, going to play with you. Papa don't like no screaming around here. No lip from the women when they chug that beer. Show now sun gon' shine, gon' be grown. Ladies of the Marian kind. Show now moon gon' rise like a huckleberry pie in the middle of the sky. Gon' be all right, gon' be all right. Yes! <laughs> that was easy. That little lick I did at the end. I oh, like that. I, I, now I would've got a note. <laughs> <laughs> I would have got a note. They would have said, um, mm -mm, you got to keep that straight. That's a little, little bit too much, Latoya. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, thank you so much for joining us. I loved that rendition. It was beautiful. And make, tell us where we can look you up and find you. Well, you can find me on Instagram, at Latoya London Official. On Facebook, Miss Latoya London. That's M S Latoya London, and uh, on Twitter at Latoya London. Um, and you can also find the song on all streaming platforms for download or for streaming. Um, Apple Music, Tidal, Spotify, all of them. Um, and yeah, and also join my YouTube page, my YouTube channel. Um, subscribe and you know have get updates of new videos, um, shows, things like that. All stuff me. So. I am that. subscribed. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Well, thank you so much again for joining us with This Is R&B, The Reach. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Oh.